Alright, hello everyone and welcome to the WWE Discussion. I'm your host in WWE Doug Dougie Doug, and it is good to be back. So I've been gone for the past week or so, and well, let's just say that during my time off, I took some time to think about how I wanted to do WWE Discussion, or just, you know, doing videos on this channel going forward. So, after taking some time away to think about it and everything else, you know, I think I'm just going, instead of talking about the whole episode of whatever WWE show, instead I'm just going to do what I do with my NFL discussion videos, which is just pick out certain things and then just kind of go from there and talk about those. So in this episode, we're, you know, we're going to be skipping over some things like the opening segment, which was just really boring. Um, and, you know, talking about some of the more, some of the things on the show more interesting and also possibly you know, give hints as to what is coming, um, in regards to f future programming. And, uh, with that, <coughs> we'll go ahead and get right into the action, starting with Rey Mysterio versus Finn Balor. So this was a rematch from last week, uh, Rey got a disqualification win using Eddie Guerrero's, uh, old, uh, signature chair trick. Um, so before the match, you had a promo from Priest and Balor where they tried to recruit Dominic, but, uh, Dominic... Clearly, well, well, Dominic didn't really seem to be that much interested in it. Um, so the match would then start during a commercial break. Uh, so the live crowd got a few more minutes of action than those watching at home. As expected, these guys had an entertaining exchange. Granted, there were some times where it felt like the match kind of slowed down more than it needed to. Uh, but still, good match overall. In a way, this is kind of a dream match. and It would be nice to see this on a premium live event stage so these guys can get proper time to really you know put on a showcase <clears throat> uh Balor was able to score a relatively clean win um and ultimately yeah there, there's that and judgment day you know they kind of lost some steam they removed edge from the group and ripped this guy up out with injury so kind of losing a bit of momentum but still able to stay relevant with this few materials so Perhaps this feud will continue um, and conclude at SummerSlam in a tag team match that seems most likely what's going to happen. And maybe Dominic switches sides. You know, uh, maybe that happens. Maybe Edge shows up um, or returns before SummerSlam. Um, and instead it's Edge versus Balor at SummerSlam. Maybe. Either way, I think... Yeah, I think really the Mysterios versus Judgment Day probably have it to SummerSlam. Whether or not Edge returns before then remains to be seen, and if he does, does Judgment Day get a third person, and does it become a six-man tag team match at SummerSlam? Interesting possibilities, but I think that uh, the normal tag team match is more likely for the time being. Bianca Belair versus Carmella for the Raw Women's Championship. And this match went about expected. Uh, Mella got in some offense, uh, and Belair would then make a comeback and establish her physical superiority. Uh, a couple of awkward moments, but still a solid match for the most part. Not as good as the one at Money in the Bank, but, you know, still a you know, solid TV match that allowed both women to show off what they do in the ring. Uh, distraction from Becky Lynch at ringside ended up leading to Belair being counted out, which meant that she lost the match, but not the title, and then the EST laid out Mella for good measure to conclude things. So, what makes this thing interesting is that it sets the stage for a WrestleMania rematch between Belair and Lynch for the Raw Women's title at SummerSlam, and I do gotta give WWE props. Normally, they're way too trigger happy when it comes to making rematches like this happen, but they played the long game here, waited, and now you have a big time match set for a big time stage, that being SummerSlam. You waited, and I feel like that wait's gonna be paid off very handsomely for WWE, and you know, hey, fans get another match between these two. There's been some time since their last match, so hey, um, granted I know there was a triple threat now in a cell, but that, again, that was a triple threat, I'm talking about the singles match here. Um, however, the downside to this segment, the biggest negative, was that Carmella got an unnecessary win, which sets up an unnecessary rematch, which she will not win, so it's just more wasted time and energy on a performer. Not saying she doesn't, not, or yeah, it's it's just wasted because, you know, there's no point in having Carmella versus Belair again for the Raw Women's title for a third time when the end result's still going to be the same. As I've talked about before, rematches, it's one thing to do a rematch, it's another thing to have the end result be the same. And if you're going to do 
you know, a rematch. We're gonna do the original match and then a rematch, and then the end result of the rematch is the same as the original match. There's no point in a third match. So all in all, it'll be interesting to see when WWE does the th uh, the third match between Balor and Carmella. Hopefully, it's done before SummerSlam, and we can just kind of get this thing over with, and then move on. Uh, you know, finish that feud and then move on to Belair versus Lynch. Miz and Champa versus AJ Styles and Ezekiel, and the bad guys dominated a large portion of this action until they found the one tag in and one on the rampage. The match then ended with a DQ after Champa refused to stop, to, uh, stop attacking Styles while the Miz was the illegal competitor. Pretty weak finish, very anticlimactic, very overly dramatic. Uh, WWE's way too trigger happy with the DQs. Simple match, you know, everybody got to look good, but nothing memorable about the match. Um, going forward, it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen in regard to SummerSlam for all these four guys. Ezekiel probably won't have a spot on the card unless Kevin Owens can make his return from injury in time. So, looking at Miz, Champ, and Styles, the question is, is how much does WWE trust Logan Paul? Do they trust him enough to compete in a singles match? So it's Logan Ball versus The Miz, and then Styles versus Champa. Or is it possible that Paul teams with Styles to take on Miz and Champa? That one seems more likely, and honestly, that's a good way to get the most out of Paul in his next match. Um, this would only be his third match, and working with guys like Styles, Miz, and Champa, you know, veterans. You know, again, it's it's a good way to bring the best out of him. However, at some point, though, Paul is going to have to go it alone in a singles match. So, again, do they trust him to do it now, or do they wait a little bit? Seth Rollins and Theory versus Bobby Lashley and Riddle. And Theory took control of Riddle almost immediately with a series of hard left hands. It took Tegan and Lashley for the good guys to take over for a bit. Then, unexpectedly, Dolph Ziggler's music of all people hit, and he walked to the ring wearing a nice suit and tie as the show went to break. Show off then watched the rest of the match from ringside. Um, towards the end, uh, the Visionary and Mr. Money in the Bank were able to keep Riddle isolated, uh, but a Eventually, he made the hot take to the Almighty. So, physicality or the physical ability of all four men never in question, and most certainly on display. The match had, you know, um, plenty to enjoy. Um, towards the end, Theory tried to use the ropes um, to get a pinfall victory, and even though the referee was in position and clearly saw it, he paid no mind to it. So Ziegler had to step in and prevent Theory from getting the win that way. Riddle hits the RKO for the win. You know, crowd gets a nice moment right there, and then Sinclair adds to it by laying out theory after the match. So good match that goes out the show, but obviously the biggest talk point is Sinclair. His actions create intrigue, but will it get him on a SummerSlam card? I think that's the biggest question is, the, what effect will this have, if any, for SummerSlam? Um, you know, because right now theory is preoccupied with Lashley in the U.S. title, so... How exactly does Ziggler fit in there? Is he just a stop on the road to SummerSlam for Theory? Is he somebody to, which wouldn't really make that much sense. You know, Theory, Theory seems to be a bit too all over the place. Yes, he's Mr. Money in the Bank. And it's good to remind people that yes, he's going to be looming over that last man standing match between Reigns and Lesnar. Yes, but I feel like there should be more focus on his title match with, um... Bobby Lashley, and now you throw Ziggler into the mix, and it adds intrigue, yes, but also adds more confusion, because it's just, again, there's too many things happening around Theory, and I think WWE needs to kind of pump the brakes a bit, yes, Theory is a, you know, up-and-coming performer, and he's looked good in the ring, he's done pretty well on the mic, um, selfie thing, not really a fan of, but, yeah, I think pump the brakes, because, you know, it's just <laughs> doing way too much, and pushing them way too much. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna slow it down a bit. Uh, but, you know, it will be interesting to see what happens next in Ziggler. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode of WWE Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.